Let's turn it around for me. It won't always be like this. The Lord will perfect me. Say, what tongues have not yet said. They sacrificed unto devils, not to God, to God's small g, whom they knew not, to new gods that came newly up, whom your fathers feared not. Of the rock that begot thee, thou art unmindful, and hast forgotten God that formed thee. And when the Lord saw it, he abhorred them because of the provoking of his sons and of his daughters and he said I will hide my face from them I will see what their end shall be for they are a very forward generation children in whom is no faith I want to talk tonight for a few minutes from a thought hiding from the faithless, hiding from the faithless. You may be seated. I was somewhat challenged tonight because this is not a popular message 
But if you will allow me to take you into the thought pattern of faith that is expected from the body of Christ, you will find out that I'm not such a bad guy after all, and I'm not going to beat you up. Somebody pray for me. Help him, Lord. Help him. So God says, these children have no faith. They run after every new thing. Hmm. They run after new doctrines. Hebrew Israelites. Yeshua Hamashiach. I heard a Pentecostal pastor was rebaptizing all their people in the name of Yeshua Hamashiach. Where'd they get that from? Elohim. And so God says uh, they sacrifice to devils to gods whom they knew not, to new gods. You know, we like new stuff, shiny stuff. Haven't been proved, don't, don't, don't know the history behind it, but it's new. I heard one of our bishops say one day, if it's new, it ain't true. Now, I don't necessarily go with that, but, you know, we got to check stuff out. We can't just run to it because it's shiny and, and new. And, and, and so God says, uh, here in Deuteronomy, uh, he talks about uh, of the rock that begat thee, thou art unmindful and has forgotten the God that formed thee. And, and so when I, when I researched this, this word faith, I only found faith two times in the Old Testament. Uh, uh, two times. And, and so up to this point, all faith development was by word of mouth. That's why when Bishop first got up, he said something about faith coming by hearing him by word. I said, all right, Lord, I'm on the right track. And, and, and so uh, uh, Israel had to have passed down trust and belief because that's what the Old Testament talked about, trust and belief. And so they had to pass down the word through word of mouth about Noah, about Moses, about Abraham, about Joseph, about Nadab and Abihu and strange fire. So I could only find faith in two different places in the Old Testament. And so God began to help me understand that uh, when people understand that faith is the basis for everything we get from God, then we have to understand that the only way we are going to get anything from God is to develop our faith. And so God said, I'm tired of people who want my blessings, but they don't want to be loyal to the blessed earth. So he says, I noticed they've gotten so carnal and so caught up uh, into what I blessed them with that they have abandoned the blesser and uh, grasp on to the blessings. Chasing after the blessings. Children in whom is no faith. And so God said, I abhor them. I, I can't stand to look at them. And so I'm going to turn my face from them because they don't have faith. But I'm going to turn to the Gentiles. Uh, 
just hunch somebody and say, that's us. <laughs> the ones they call dogs and the ones that they say aren't even a people. And God says, I'm going to teach those people faith and grace, repentance and forgiveness, and how to please God and get anything from God that they want but I'm going to hide from the faithless. Oh, Lord. And so when I begin to look at uh, what God is trying to help us to understand about this thing that he has given us called faith, then he says, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Now, I, I know some of y'all are pew babies like I was, Baptized at seven years old, got the Holy Ghost at nine. Uh, in, in, in Kansas City, my father, who was the pastor, we went to church Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, cleaned the church up on Saturday, stayed at church all day on Sunday, went to somebody else's church Sunday afternoon, and left their afternoon service and came back to our night service. Y'all know nothing about that, do you? Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Thank God we have moved into another realm, but we still got to hear the word of God. And so in Matthew chapter 8 and verse number 5, when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion beseeching him and saying, Lord, my servant lieth at home sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. And Jesus said unto him, I will come heal him. The centurion said, Lord, I'm not worthy that you should come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed, for I am a man under authority, having soldiers unto me, and I say unto this man, go, and he goeth to another come, and he cometh, and to my servants do this, and he doeth, and when Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to them that followed him, verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. Jesus said, I haven't found any faith among the folks that were supposed to know who I am. And so he says, uh, Jesus is talking now in this chapter of Matthew, the 8th chapter, and he said, I say unto you that many shall come from the east and the west and shall sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven, but the children of the kingdom shall be cast into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And Jesus said unto the centurion, Go thy way, and as thou hast believed, so be it un, so be it done unto thee. And his servant was healed in the self same hour. And so when uh, I talk about uh, hiding from the faithless. Uh, Jesus is hiding from those who will not develop their faith. And, and, but, but, but he is showing us that even folks that don't know him uh, have enough faith to speak to him and ask for what they want and even with Without knowing that they have faith, even without being what we call a Christian, he gets what he asked from God because he believed. Oh Lord, help me here, Holy Ghost. He is a man who believes, brings his need, and Jesus says, as you have believed, so it is done unto thee. And in the self-same hour, his servant was healed. I believe that anything you're going to get from God, you have to provide at least two things. You have to have faith, and then you have to speak out of your mouth what you have faith for God to do for you. 
Hallelujah. Shake somebody and say, you got to say it before you can see it. Ah, because faith has corresponding action. Ah, faith has corresponding action. Faith has corresponding action. So in the book of Matthew, the ninth chapter, Jesus enters into a ship in verse number one and passed over and came into his own and behold, they brought unto him a man sick of the palsy laying on a bed and Jesus seen their faith. Said unto the sick of the palsy, son, be of good cheer, thy sins be forgiven thee. Now, isn't it amazing? They brought this man to be healed uh, from palsy, but Jesus forgave his sins. Isn't it amazing that there are some people that we don't want to touch because they're sinners? There are some people who we tell that they can't get what they can need from God because they're sinners. But God is trying to get us to open up our minds uh, to see and to understand that he will do anything for anybody that got faith. And if you take care of their need, uh, and the biggest need was not for this man to be healed, the need for was him to be saved but they had to get him to Jesus for one thing and then he did something else Lord have mercy but we have a tendency to predetermine who can be saved oh help us prejudice saints we have a tendency to say, oh, they're too, they're too far gone in sin. I'm not going to talk to them. Or they're too rich. Or they're too much in society. I'm not going to talk to them. We have a tendency to predetermine who we want God to save. Or who he can save. But I am convinced uh, that the Lord wants us through our faith in him to tell everybody and anybody that Jesus is a healer, a savior, a keeper. Oh, hallelujah. Uh, Bishop, I told some folks not too long ago, I said, you know, if we really, really, really looked at that scripture and understood what Jesus did, he said to us, greater work shall you do in my name. So now, when is the last time you walked up to somebody and just said, thy sins be forgiven thee? Lord have mercy. It's not that we can't do it. It's just we too mean to do it. Because we have been convinced that if you live in like that, you deserve to go to hell. But there are some people that he wants to save. And he's waiting on some of us to get the vision that we have power. Oh, God. I hope somebody's praying with me here tonight. And so, behold, he said, uh, certain of the scribes and within themselves, this man blasphemeth. They're talking about Jesus. Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, wherefore think ye evil in your hearts? For whether it is easier to say, thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, arise and walk. And so Jesus saw the man's faith. Faith can be seen, but most people are not looking for faith. We're looking for faults. Jesus said, I'm not looking for your faults. I'm looking for your faith because I'm hiding from the faithless, but I'm looking for the faithful. Ah, and so when I look at what he is saying to us, uh, when is the last time we had enough faith to tell somebody in our family or on our job, if you come to my church, you could be healed. Oh, Lord. Uh, and then bring them to church and bring them to the altar and say they have come to be healed. Uh, I still believe that Jesus is still healing folks. Uh, I still believe that it doesn't matter whether you have cancer or some gallbladder problem. Uh, the God that 
we serve can heal you from anything because he is God. Oh, Lord. And so I believe that people can still be set free in the church. Uh, I believe that people can still be set free in the church. I believe that people can still be healed at church. Uh, but we have to come to Jesus with faith and not fear. God has not given us the spirit of faith fear but of power and of love and of a sound mind you can come to church and sit in church and sit through worship and sit through the choir and even sit through the preaching but if you only sit and don't worship if you only sit and don't seek if you only sit and don't ask you will go out of the church just like you came in uh, faith in God is always going to be a requirement to get anything from the Lord you can have money you can have education you can have pedigree and you can have status but if you don't have faith it is impossible to please God without faith shake somebody and say my faith needs a tune up Lord have mercy and so when I looked at the woman in Matthew the ninth chapter and the 20 verse first she said unto herself, if I may but touch his garment, I shall be whole. Lord have mercy. You see, there's got to be some inward conversation about what you believe God can do for you. And so you know the story. She touched Jesus and Jesus turned him about and when he saw her he said daughter be of good comfort thy faith have made thee whole and the woman was made whole from that hour now what I like about this portion of the story is she said it and she didn't even say it out loud she said within herself Lord have mercy there is some stuff that you got to say to yourself there are so many negative conversations going on all around you there are so many negative people all around you there are some stuff that you got to say within yourself you got to tell God I believe that you're able to do anything but fail Lord have mercy shake somebody and say I think I've been saying some wrong stuff oh, God yeah and so when I looked Jesus said to them in Matthew 9 28 Jesus said believe ye that I'm able to do this they said yeah Lord and he said according to your faith Ooh, Jesus he said according to your faith be it unto you and so faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things that you can't see so if faith is the evidence faith is the substance faith 
is the substance of the evidence. Faith is the substance that God looks for. And then he turns your faith into evidence of the thing that you need him to do. I wish I was in a sanctified church tonight. And so if you look at all Jesus has done and is doing here's what you have to take home from this message tonight if he did it for them he can do it for me and since he left us a written document called the bible i'm gonna take this bible and follow the directions and follow the word that god has given us and I found out that when I read this word and I find out that he's hiding from the faithless in order to get him to show up I gotta have some faith and I got to open my mouth and say something shake somebody and say open up your mouth and say something and so when you begin to open up your mouth and say something you will understand that faith is more than a miracle faith is a stabilizer faith is more than a miraculous happening faith is a way of life faith is something that you do on a daily basis we walk by faith and none by sight that if you hold on to God's unchanging hand faith Lord have mercy will help you not just look at the street faith will help you on the street because without faith it's impossible to please God but with faith I can do anything but fail with faith I can speak and demons tremble with faith I can speak and angels come to my rescue with faith I can bring restoration with faith heaven will stand up and look at what I'm doing with faith you can move the hand of God with faith I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me my God shall supply all somebody help me say all all of your need according to his riches in glory I just felt something go in my spirit I just felt something say unlimited resources we serve an unlimited God we serve a God that's just waiting on you to increase your faith increase your understanding increase your net worth increase everything that is put in your hands my God shall supply Three people would say unlimited resources. Unlimited, 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 unlimited. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. Unlimited power. Unlimited healing. Unlimited favor. Unlimited joy. My God shall supply. Tell somebody and say, turn up the volume. You got to turn up the volume of your faith. You got to turn up the volume of your prayer life. You got to turn up the volume on your expectation. My God, my God, my God. Shout, shout, shout. got to 
to say it before you can see it. Now somebody say with me, my God shall supply all my need. Stop asking God to pay your monthly church note. Ask him to pay it off. Stop asking God to pay your house note. Ask him to pay it off. Stop asking God to do just a little bit when he wants to do a lot. My God shall supply. I was in a sanctified church. Oh, Jesus. See, the devil wants to depress you and suppress you. But anytime the devil gets busy trying to make you think that he has power, you got to remind him who your daddy is. My God shall supply all my needs. All my wants, everything that I can think I need, he's able, he's not just able, he's well able, he will open the door, he will supply your need, he will. I like this one. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not walk. I dare you to tell somebody, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not walk. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not walk. The Lord is. Ooh, I felt that thing. What do you want? What you want God to do? Then say it. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not walk. He's opening a door right now. He's healing your body right now. He's satisfying you with joy right now. He's giving you power right now. The Lord is. He's everything I need. Everything I want. He's everything I desire. Ooh. He said, if your ways please me, I just give you the desires of your heart. Ooh. Look at somebody and say, what a mighty God we serve. If your ways please him, he'll give you the desires of your heart. Lord, have mercy. Ooh, but he's hiding from the faithless. And if he's hiding from the faithless, that means he's got his face turned to those that have faith. And if you got faith, all you got to do is come and tell your daddy what you need. If you got faith, all you got to do is tell your daddy, I want to please you. If you got faith, all you got to do is Tell your daddy I, I need the oh, I need the
somebody worship him. Now somebody worship him. He's waiting to hear you. He's waiting to hear you. What you need. What you want. Ah! Oh, you gotta worship him. Open your mouth and say something. Open your mouth and say something. Open your mouth. Open your mouth! Do me a favor. Reach over and shake somebody's head and tell them you can have anything you need tonight. Now tell them this. But your praise has to be commensurate with what you ask for. If you ain't willing to pray, then you ain't willing to get what you ask for. Oh! I feel a praise in here, Bishop. Yeah. I just heard the Holy Ghost say, don't praise me asking me, praise me thanking me.
what God said. 2020 is going to be the greatest year of your life. Tell somebody and say 2020 is going to be the greatest year of my life. Now here's what I heard the Lord say while I was standing there. Who 
Yahusha. Here's what I heard the Lord say. God said, bring me a 20, 20 offering. 20 plus 20 is 40. Bring a $40 offering and lay it on this altar. And when you lay it on the altar, you say, I'm planting this seed in the greatest year of my life. Say it, Elder. Uh, come on. There are many of you come. Plant a 20, 20 offering. And when you plant it, say, I'm planting this seed in the greatest year of my life. I'm planting this seed in the greatest year of my life. Bishop, 20 years ago, they told me, they said, you can't get a charter school. You don't have enough clout. You don't have enough this. You don't have enough connection. But I told the Lord, I'm going to teach children entrepreneurialism. And I said, we need a school that's supported by tax dollars. We put the application in in April. They called us. No, we put the application in in January. They called us in April. They said you can open in September 1999. We opened the first year, 197 children. Second year, we doubled to 400 children. Last year, we had not enough room to put everybody, 540 children. The government has to give me over $7 million a year, and they don't like it. They audited me two times. The last time they audited me, they had to give me $50,000 because they had made a mistake. I'm not telling you what I think. I'm telling you the God that I know. Before you pick that up, there are some others that said, Bishop, I don't have 2020, but I got 20. I want to bring it and sow it wherever you are, whatever you have. Get up and sow it on this altar and believe God. Come on, wherever you are, just get up and come, 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 come. Whatever you have and just sow it on this altar because I believe God can do anything you ask him to do. And if, and if, and if you haven't got what you've been believing God for, it's because you haven't opened up your mouth and really asked him. But if you ask him anything, oh, somebody say anything. Anything you need, he's able. Somebody shout, he's able. Somebody shout, my God is able. that young man we give our kids money to buy $200 tennis shoes and don't give them money to put in church thank you mother for doing that hallelujah he's hiding from the faithless but his face is open to those who have enough faith to ask God for anything I gotta quit just reach over and touch somebody one more time and tell them you can have anything you want. You just gotta ask him. You just gotta ask him. Father, tonight, yeah, throw those back down there. Father, tonight, Thank you for these gifts and seeds that have been planted. Bishop, Bishop Gates, help me. Just walk on these seeds. Every seed that has been planted tonight, we destroy yokes as we walk on these seeds. We destroy no and we turn the no into a yes. They put in for a bank loan. They put in for different things. They were turned down on. But I hear the Holy Ghost say, ask again. Ask again. 
Ask again. Ask again. Oh, I feel something in here. I feel bones breaking. I feel nose breaking. I don't know what I just stepped on right in here, but I hear the Holy Ghost say there was a marriage on the way to divorce court, but he said I'm mending that marriage. Somebody give God praise. 